Hi, uh, this is going to be a quick, uh, hopefully, Neo Geo update video. So I have done this video once before and it ended up being an hour long. So I'm going to try and uh, be a bit uh, less verbose this time. So you probably remember this board. So this is Capcom versus SNK uh, MBS board. So, and I basically did a mod on it, uh, which is this huge, horrible mess of wires to get HDMI output. So it's, uh, it takes the digital video and audio and basically just pipes it out of the HDMI port instead of going through the digital to analog converters. So in theory, it's pretty much the perfect video signal. Uh, you can't do much better than that. And so, yeah, I did it on this board. But the problem with this board is that it is a single game. And unless if you really, really are into that game, you're probably not very interested. So pretty much this is the same hardware, but with a cartridge slot. And so I wanted to do it on this, but basically stupid sentimental reasons. I didn't want to do it on, on this board because, uh, you know, I was a bit worried about uh, maybe breaking it. So instead, I went to eBay and I bought a board which was listed as not working. And this is the board. And uh, basically, I'll talk a bit about how I attempted to fix it a bit later. But first, I'll talk you through the HDMI modification. So basically, it's the same as the other board, the exact same hardware, just a bit neater because I knew where I was going with it uh, this time was the... The old one was uh, basically an experiment. And so one of the nicest or one of the biggest improvements over that one is that I used an HDMI extension cable this time because it was dirt cheap. And um, yeah, that's just glued in place on the plastic there. But it's so much more robust than the uh, connector was on the other one. Also, everything is modular. All these, uh, you can disconnect them really easily. So if you wanted to move this this part of it onto another board it would be very easy to do so these two wires here are all the video signals uh, this wire here is the audio signals and it was a different audio DAC this time so uh, I had to do a bit bit more work this is the YM3016 so yeah I had to put in a bit of effort to to get that working but it was very very similar to the the other one the the biggest pain was the clock signal so this this clock because it generates the clock because it needs to overclock the Neo Geo to get it to output at 60 hertz, is what modern TVs is kind of expect. But the Neo Geo itself outputs at 59.1, so it's, it's a very small overclock. But yeah, getting because the the clock signal needs to go all the way over here and then down below here, it ends up around here on the board. There was a lot of interference and it was a real pain to get this working, so I ended up using some this multi-cord wire and yeah most of the most of the wires are just connected to ground to provide a shield and they're also grounded on the the other end as well and that made it good enough that it now works fine but yeah maybe a differential pair or something would be the better solution to that so i guess yes next is let's see it actually working and uh, i just need to plug it in And I'll just adjust the, the camera angle. So one thing that you'll notice, that's a new splash screen. It's a new custom splash screen. Um, here you go. This is obviously uh, connected via HDMI, uh, just like the old one. And uh, as you can see, yeah, it works uh, perfectly well. Um, pressing uh, the button on here, uh, just like on the other one, changes the scan line methods uh, but this time uh, it actually tells you it's got some text uh, just to make it a bit nicer so half brightness is what it defaults to and it's probably the one that I prefer so it's basically line doubled but every other line is only half the brightness that uh, the previous one was so it gives you the impression of scan lines without it being really dark um, so one thing which I did notice when doing this mod and uh, doing fix-ups was uh, there was an issue with the simple sound generator. So basically the sound chip has, uh, it can produce basically beeps 
and uh, not that many games use it, but some games use it for like the coin sound, etc. Um, but yeah, this is causes problems for us because we're only sampling the uh, digital to analog converter, but the simple sound generator is just coming out as an analog signal off the chip. Um, so if we wanted to fix that, so there's a couple of uh, I have a couple of ideas for that. Um, but yeah, you miss those sounds at the moment, which isn't really a problem. Like you can see on this game, wouldn't really be a problem, but uh, on some games, obviously, it's uh, more of an issue. So I said earlier that I I bought this board and it uh, didn't work when I bought it. Um, that uh, if I just uh, pause that game and bring the camera down. When I bought it off eBay, it said that the it was just black, a black screen, and so I got it, it was just black screen, and basically I I probed this chip it doesn't really need to go that much into it. This is the BIOS, it was easy to get to, but it has all the address bus and the data bus for the 68K. And um, basically I, I realised that it was supposed to be displaying an error, but because the RAM was broken, the function that was supposed to show the error didn't work, which is really stupid. I don't know why they didn't go in and handcraft that so it didn't use the memory. But yeah, it didn't... It was accessing the memory and the memory was broken, so it couldn't actually display the error. And so I modified the BIOS as an EPROM. So I just took the old BIOS out, I read it, and then I modified it to knock out the, the call to the error function. Just so then I could see what other errors there were. So I basically did that, I ran it, and I looked through, took a trace using a logic analyzer. In fact, it was one of these really cheap ones that you can get off eBay for about six quid. But yeah, I, I probed it with that, uh, decoded all, uh, what it was doing, and basically I found that RAM chip was wrong in one bit. So I desoldered that, just got a new RAM chip off eBay. It's quite a generic part. And that basically fixed all of the video issues, made the games run, everything. So I was really happy with it. But then I quickly noticed that the audio wasn't working. And in fact, uh, if I turn this board up, you can see the extent of the, the fixes, which I had to, had to make. So here's the underside of the board. And a lot of this is to do with the HDMI mod, but also maybe 50% is to do with trying to fix the audio as well. And so this, Top bit here, these are all the, the video lines. Uh, in fact, I've soldered on more lines than I actually needed there because uh, once I started doing the soldering, I just carried on. These are the audio lines. So they both come out that side. They're the three big lines which go to the top. And then the rest of this is all audio fix-ups. And so this one here is... I basically found that there was a problem with the right line of the uh, that connects to the RAM. So it started off writing to RAM absolutely fine, but over time it would stop sending that signal and eventually it would degrade altogether. And this is done by a custom chip, but it's basically just an OR gate of the memory request line and the write line. And so to fix that, I just added this OR gate, uh, it's just 74,000 logic, and that basically now takes care of that. And then the RAM worked, I then ran it again, uh, I kept getting these Z80 errors on boot up, which is basically it tries to communicate between the 68,000 processor and the Z80 processor. Z80 processor is the audio processor. and yeah, so I was having problems with that, and so because the latch line for basically reading that value was on the exact same chip that the RAM line had gone wrong on, it was right next to it, I thought it's, you know, a strong possibility that that might also be broken. And so this is what this is doing, this is basically, it takes some 
address lines and pulls them together, I think, and some Nio request lines and things. It's not very interesting. But yeah, so I wired it up and I took the, the line over to the other side of the chip and basically now I could always get in. It never said Z80 error, but now the problem was is that it would play sounds, but the wrong sounds. And in fact, the communication between the 68000 and the Z80, uh, especially on this game, is incredibly simple. It just sends the sound ID of the, the sound effect that it wants playing, and then the Z80 deals with playing it. So it was clear that it was going wrong just because the wrong codes were being sent through. And so in fact I went as far as to make a device where I could, basically by changing the dip switches, I could change the codes that were being sent. And then I could check to see can I actually play every single sound. So I knew it was to do with the communication uh, after that worked. So this is what this one is. This is just a latch. And this is the 68,000 bus. And then out this side is the Z80 bus. And then the the line, this orange wire, is basically the line which latches in data. Which is a bit of a shame, it needed to go around onto the other board. But um, yeah, the line which I need is underneath this foam, uh, which I didn't want to uh, try and pull any more off. So that's basically it. Um, I, in fact, uh, it's not quite uh, a happy ending as the uh, audio is still slightly broken. Seems to work absolutely fine with this game, but some other games it will work for maybe a minute and then cut out. Annoyingly, one of those games is Metal Slug. So that's why I haven't done this video for a long time because I was trying to fix that. But uh, yeah, I've kind of. I think I'm losing interest in it now. So uh, I thought I'd do a video and get it out there. And maybe somebody can guess what my issue is. But yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video.